Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. If you ever thought about closing your carport in to create a nice game room, stay with us. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. Welcome to the show this week. It's obvious we're right at the start of another project. Now this is a project that a lot of homeowners are considering around their home, and that's to take an existing carport and storage area and close it to convert it to a living area, in this case a very nice game room. Then replacing the car shelter with a carport and storage area there on the end. Now of course, this is a lot less expensive in building a carport like this than it is to create entire new living area. Now we'll show you this completed project within the next half hour. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. The framers have really moved along well in framing all of the walls for our new game room as well as a new carport, including the new storage areas out on this end of the carport. That'll really come in handy later for the homeowners. Now the concrete finisher did a great job as well and he did a few things that I would recommend that you try if you're about to pour a slab for a carport or a garage. First of all, on the transition area between the carport or garage and the living area, make sure you have a step down like we have here. It's about three inches. That will prevent any water from blowing up under the door unit that'll be installed later. Also, if you have a large expanse of concrete, it's a good chance you're going to have some cracks sooner or later. In order to control those cracks so that they're in a particular area, then a score joint like we have here is a great idea. This score joint goes from the front all the way to the back, and we have one right across the middle as well. Now this will control those cracks so that they're not unsightly out in the middle of the slab. Also, a slab can be very slick and easy to fall down when you're getting out of your car. You don't have some type of texture on the surface of the concrete slab. So we had our finisher lightly broom the slab when it was still a little, little wet and created a nice broom finish. So quite a little bit of texture there. Also, rain can blow in. We want to make sure that it flows out properly. So we have this slab sloped towards the front so that it'll go on the driveway and find its way to the street. Now, this is a situation where the homeowner is planning on utilizing a large attic space that will be created when the framers build the large gable roof. Now, in order to get to that space, we've created an area between the two storage areas that will be a staircase that will go, turn, and reach up to the upper level. Also, in order to accommodate the extra weight that will be in the attic area, we had to use a special wood I-beam for our ceiling joist. Now they're 12 inches tall and they're placed 16 inch on center and this is a pre-engineered I-beam that has been engineered to span the area that we have here. Also the large beam above me here is a triple LVL beam or a laminated veneer lumber beam. This will carry the distance from one end to the other and support the heavy roof load we have above. Now the homeowners also were planning on using the upper area of the game room for extra storage, but we handled that seal and joist situation a little bit different. To support the attic storage area over this, the old carport, we've added a 2x12 right alongside the original 2x8 seal and joist. Now this combined wood will really support all of the storage space above and everybody walking along there. Of course, we'll be putting three quarter inch plywood on top of it a little bit later in the project. We'll also continue adding the two by 12s right alongside all the other two by eights that we have here. Now this, as I said, it going together like this really is adding a lot of support that we need up top. Now originally, the end of the carport had a long hip roof. Now with that hip roof in place really prevented us from running the roof line like we're wanting to with a gable roof running all the way down through the new area. So by removing that also adds a lot of headroom for the storage area. Also, we're even going into the original attic space of the existing house to provide even more attic space. That'll be fairly impressive once we get that complete. Now we're at the stage that they'll be running all of the rafters, decking the roof, getting some shingles on so it'll be nice and dry, and it won't be long, we'll be installing the door units that you see already out on the job site. Stay with us. 
Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini show you this week's simple solution. Brought to you by DuPont Tyvek. Build it once, build it right. Now one thing about owning a home, sooner or later you're going to have to do some minor furniture repairs. Well here's a problem Danny you see in a lot of homes where a wooden chair has started to come apart and the chair rung has popped right out of the hole in the leg. Like typically what people do to fix this is just squeeze a little more glue in there and clamp it together. Yeah, that never works. I've tried that myself. No, within a couple of weeks you're back to square one. So what I like to do is first start with a straight blade screwdriver and scrape out any of the old glue that you can get out of the hole. This way the rung will go as deeply into the hole as it originally was and won't be blocked by the old glue. Uh -huh. Then take some carpenter's glue and put plenty on the end of the rung and a little in the hole. Okay, then just smear it around a little bit. Push it, the rung back in uh -huh. and pull it together. Now this chair, it actually fits pretty tightly together so we don't need to clamp it. Okay. But here's the real trick. Earlier, before I put any glue in it, I drilled a small diameter hole. You might not be able to see it, but it's right in here. And what that does, it's 5 64th inch diameter hole, which is about the same size as a finishing nail. What it does is it allows any of the excess glue we just put in there to squeeze out. Okay. This way the dowel will go all the way deeply into the hole, otherwise the glue will block it. Then once you have it tight together, and hold that for me, okay. just put the nail in the hole here and tack it in, and this nail will help hold everything together until the glue dries, and then even if the glue joint breaks, the dowel won't come out. Great. Welcome back to the show. Well, now over the last couple of weeks, we have had some great weather, and our carpenters have really taken advantage of it and gotten us to the stage that we've really been waiting for, the stage that our roofer could finally install all of our dimensional shingles. This will enable us to really move forward with the rest of the work we have on the inside of the house. Now, prior to the roofer being able to come out to the job, our carpenters finished all of the framing of the roof, both the gable over the carport as well as a tie-in back to the house. After all of the rafters were in, we decked it out with half-inch plywood, put down our 15-pound building felt, then focused on the completion of all the soffit and fascia area, including the installation of a continuous soffit vent all the way around the addition. This is a perfect way to introduce a nice layer of fresh air into the attic space that'll make the shingles last as long as they should and keep it a little bit cooler in the attic where the homeowner plans to use for a lot of storage. Now, they ran into a little bit of a problem because the house is an older house. It had a particular type of trim right under the eave strip that they actually had to make out on the job using a table saw and a router attached to a table in order to create the profile and look of the molding that we really needed. They completed all of that as well as the installation of all of the doors and prep work for our bricks. The building felt and our wall ties are all in place. You can see our bricks are also in place so it'll only be a day or so before our brick mason's out to complete all of the exterior surface of the addition. Now inside they've also been able to complete a lot of work. Our carpenters have completed the sistering of the 2x12s beside the original 2x8 ceiling joists. This will provide all the support we need for the future attic storage the homeowners have planned. We'll look at it in just a little bit. Now this area is the original back wall of the house. We removed this wall and took in a little storage area to create this little nook in the room. Now this area will be used for a very popular reason that you find in today's homes, and that's the accommodation of the family computer. We have a large countertop here, on this end, an entertainment center. Now this is a point in the job that it's very important that the electrician is working on the same page with our cabinet maker, because when he brings his cabinet in, he'll be cutting out holes for these two outlets, and if they're not in the right place, that's a tough thing to repair on those cabinets. Now I'm standing on some half-inch cement backer board. The reason for this is since this is the original part of the house, it's on a wood subfloor. So in order to have the ceramic tile that we'll have in the game room extend into this area, we needed to put this down to provide the backing for that. And you know, this is a fairly large room we're working in here, but if you don't have a sufficient height on the ceiling, it'll make it look a lot smaller. Now even though we put a cap slab down, we were able to keep the height of the ceiling up to eight and a half feet. And it's a fairly large room, but it'll look a lot smaller once the pool table, ping ball machines, 
and a few couches and sofas in here. It'll really fill up quick. Now the draftsman did a good job in providing enough space here in the design, but he also did an excellent job in the carport area. It is a good sized carport, plenty of room for the two cars that the homeowners plan on parking here. Now with this much space, it's also creating a large storage area above us here in the attic. And to get to that attic space, the homeowners can use the new staircase. Now the area on either side of the staircase will also be used for storage. Over on this side, the plumbers are in the process of installing two water heaters that will serve the hot water needs of the house. Then over on this side, perfect storage area for the bicycles, lawn mowers and that kind of thing. But up here is a lot more storage. Now this is a lot of storage space from the top of the stairs to the end of the attic space is over 90 feet and between 12 and 15 feet wide. Now you can see why we spent so much time really beefing up these areas because there will be a lot of storage sitting around up here. Also, we have the luxury of having a doorway that was in, in the existing house from a bedroom on the second level of the house that will provide even better access from that end of the room. Now there's a lot of space here and because of the gable area we built over the carport, there's almost another room over here that actually could be used later for a study or an office if the homeowners ever needed that additional space. Now this is, these are a lot of things to consider when you're building onto your home, that if you can create a place like this without actually building onto the home, you can always use it later. But for right now, these homeowners are planning on using it for storage. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out the best new products. Brought to you by The Home Depot. Dimmers are more popular now than they've ever been before because homeowners are realizing you can really control the mood in a room by controlling the intensity of the light in that particular room. So there's so many different dimmers to choose from, so many different styles, but now there's even a new one. It's called the Spacer from Lutron. It's a remote control dimmer. Now the display that you see here of the Spacer shows that it can replace a regular single pole switch to turn the light on. You hit it one time, the lights slowly come up. You want to go down with it, push it one time, it'll slowly go down. You can also control the intensity of the light with the little small buttons that are right here. They can slowly take it down or take it back up. Now you can do the same thing with the little remote control. Now on the display here, they have it wired up just for obvious reasons, but it works the same way as the control on the wall. You push it one time, it goes down, you push it one more time, comes back up, and then you can control the intensity again through the two small buttons there. That way you can make the light in the room any way you want it from the convenience of your easy chair. Now, if you're comfortable with electricity, this is a fairly easy do-it-yourself project to remove the old single pole switch and install the new one. If you're not comfortable, you'll probably want to talk to the electrician. But you can buy that at the home center for a little bit more than $50. Well, our painters are doing a great job, and with just a little bit of cleanup in this area, it'll be ready to be used by the homeowners. Now, a little over a month ago, our brick masons were out on the project, and they laid all of the bricks on the outside of the house. And then we had our painters come in and paint all the bricks to make them look like this. Now, the reason there's a little bit of lag in time there, they needed to wait at least 30 days for all of the mortar and bricks to cure properly. Then they applied a masonry sealer over all of the bricks using an airless sprayer. Then they came back with two additional coats in order to provide the finish we have here. Now, the reason we painted the red brick is to match the existing house so that everything flows together. And really, a painted brick house, in many people's eyes, seems to defeat the purpose of having brick. But I've seen a lot of painted brick houses last as long as 15 years without needing an additional paint job. Now, you know, during a remodeling project, there's always a few changes that take place. And here's one that happened here in the back that really will make a difference for the homeowners. Now, originally, the plans called for the dirt to back right up against this wall. We were planning on putting a waterproof membrane here and sloping the water away from the building. But the homeowners mentioned they needed a place for their trash cans and firewood and other storage items that could be left outside. So we suggested creating this sto storage area or service area. Now what we'll do here where we have our retaining wall is that will allow our dirt to bank up and again slope the water away and 
peel off to each side, and you can see all the gravel that's a part of a French drain system where we have a sock pipe below this to drain the water away from this wall. So it should keep this relatively dry instead of having the water leaching through the wall itself. Also, the concrete we poured is sloped strongly towards the front so that any rainwater in this area will flow right out. We also had some concerns here on the back side about water seeping into the storage area and we applied a waterproof membrane here and we're in the process of backfilling it so that again when the water flows around they can flow right on out to the street. Now you know a lot of work's taking place here, a lot of storage ideas have been created through the design the homeowners thought through with storage areas here as well in the attic space and they've also thought through that storage idea in the game room. Well, the painters have a little more work to do here in the game room. You can see all the paint cans around. But you can also see all of the ceramic flooring that had been installed. Now, it's 16 by 16 tiles, and they positioned them in a diagonal pattern, which really looks great in a large room like this. But now, the room seems large now, but once the homeowners put in their pool table, a few large couches and sofas and chairs and tables, it'll be a little more cozy than it seems now. Now they've really utilized this end of the room well and anticipated their home computer needs with a large countertop here that'll be perfect for the home computers. Also a little tilt out here, tilt down so that the keyboard can go in the drawer. And a little bit later we'll be drilling some large holes to provide access for the cables so that none of that will be laying around on the counter. Of course you have to have a television, so television will be built in here with a little swivel right on that part of it room for a vcr dvd and plenty of storage for all of the movies and dvds also a little storage area here they haven't put the hardware on yet but you can see plenty of room there because you really can't have a game room without a few games now stay with us when we come back you'll see this room finished and furnished now let's go outside for around the yard lawn and garden tips you can use straight from the experts Brought to you by TimberTech Engineered Decking Systems. Less work, more life. I'm with Rachel DeToro, who's a landscaper that specializes in using native plants in home landscaping. Really makes sense to use the native plants. Danny, it makes all the sense in the world. Native plants are already acclimated to your locality. Okay, now how do you tell what's a native plant though? You go to the garden center and there's so many different types of plants that are shipped in. How do you really know what's native to your area? Well, you'll have to ask your nursery professional which plants are native to your community. The local extension office will always give you that information. And we have also a native plant society in almost every state now that you can access online. Oh good, that makes it a lot easier. Now, mm -hmm. how successful would someone be to come out and uh, dig a plant up out in, the, out in the woods here and take it back to the house? What are some of the things they need to know? Well, that's one way that you could do it. I would certainly ask permission from the property owner right. before digging. Um, you would want to do that in the winter months when the temperatures weren't so inclement. Right. And perhaps after a rain, when the plants have had plenty to drink, make sure that they're transplanted right away, watered in well, and they have a good start. Okay, well, is it possible to take maybe a, a small plant and transplant it and then maybe shape it to make it look a little more formal? Oh, yes. They can take on a much more formal appearance. It depends on the maintenance style that you prefer around your home. Okay, well, it, like I said, it really makes sense to use the plants that are used to the area, used to your environment, and use those at your home. Well, this game room is ready to have some fun. The homeowners already have the pool table in place, and there's so much room around the pool table, not only for the pool table's use, but for other games they may buy in the future. Over on this side of the room, there's plenty of room for sitting, with a nice sitting area, built-in refrigerator and television. Next to that, a little computer desk, and of course, the video games are in the house as well. Now, on the area that used to have the opening for the carport, it's now filled with six full view glass doors that allow plenty of natural light coming in from the courtyard side. Over on this end, we have our new carport and attached to that, plenty of storage. Now, this is a project that a lot of people consider adding to their home, converting a carport to a nice living area. If you're considering it, I hope we've helped you out this week. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.